Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. <clears throat> We're going to come out to you and preach Jesus Christ, because you will not hear Jesus preach tomorrow. You will not get the biblical Jesus. You'll get a bunch of Satan's lies. The real Jesus suffered. Beaten. For our iniquities. For our sins he bled. Because we are sinners, Christ was nailed to that cross.
His mother in the womb provided a body for Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. A virgin. And came time to be taxed April 15th. That God said, I need to get that mother with child. I need to get her to Judah. I've got to get her in the city of David. Jewish. King David. I'm telling you the Bible story of Jesus. So, taxation of the Roman government led Mary and Joseph down to Bethlehem to be taxed. If it was not for taxation, Jesus would not have been born where he was supposed to be born. That's a little tax note there. That Jesus said in his own ministry of his own words, Give that unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And he told Peter, go fishing one day and get a coin to pay taxes. That's your tax note for today. So Mary and Joseph, Mary great with child, went to Bethlehem to be taxed. And before they left, Mary's water broke, and in the stable... Christ Jesus was born. Christ, who is God and is man, 100%, was born in a stable for there is no room at the end. He was born in the land of Israel, in Bethlehem, which means the house of bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Walk for Jesus, did she. So, the life of Jesus Christ, at 13 we, we find that he's in the temple. About 30 years old, the Bible says, Jesus shows back up and is baptized of John. And at 30 years old, Jesus Christ begins his ministry to the nation of Israel, preaching to them the kingdom that they lost in a sin-cursed nation of diseases, of leprosy, of blindness, of deafness, of a religion that did not know God. Sounds familiar. And he preached for three and a half years with only twelve men that remained by his side and one of them was Satan. And at the night what is called the Last Supper. Jesus Christ sat down with his disciples and held with those disciples the Passover. And he with those disciples, he took the bread and break it and said, Eat! For this is my body of the New Testament. Now the disciples did not begin to chew on Jesus. They took the bread. Of his body, symbolic of what would happen to him the next day. He took the wine, the new wine. The Bible professes new wine from strong drink. The new wine would be he took grapes and he squeezed the grapes out and made grape juice. Nehemiah chapter 1. And he said, take this cup and drink of it. The grape juice. For this is symbolic of my blood, which I will shed for all.
and they got up from that Passover meal and went into a garden of Gethsemane. And in that garden, Jesus got down on his knees and prayed to the Father. Now, if you do not think you need to pray, God is praying to God. Happy Passover. Easter is pagan. Easter is Esther. He went off into the garden of Gethsemane and met with God the Father and prayed. He found his disciples asleep. He went back and prayed. Found them asleep. And then comes Judas with an army from the high priest of Israel. For the sole purpose to capture and to take Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ went on his own accord and before the high priest of Israel. And at that moment, the blood began to spill of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that them Sanhedrin soldiers put a sword over his head and punched the daylights out of Jesus and Paul said, Jesus, who was that that hit you? There is no peace outside of Jesus Christ. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. And they punched. And they pulled the beard of Jesus Christ. The blood began. And they tried to find witnesses against Jesus. And they couldn't find two liars that would lie to fit their needs. The world is always looking for a liar against the Christian. I'll tell you the biggest lie that the world will say about liars is that Catholic Church is Christian. That Catholic Church is a Christian killer. Christians are ones that have been brought and saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Eating Jesus makes you a cannibal. It doesn't make you saved. Now when the Sanhedrin, that is the Jewish government, finished with Jesus that morning, they handed Jesus over to Herod, the Roman government. And Herod in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, professed to us, the Roman government, four times that Jesus had no fault. Jesus Christ, by Herod, by Pilate, the Roman government, professed that Jesus Christ was innocent. That's the government of Rome professing to you the sinlessness of Jesus Christ, our Lord God and Savior. The same Roman government that brought you Istar. The same Roman government that brought you all the gods of mythology. The same God of... Constantine. That brought you the mess that's in the churches today. That government professed Jesus Christ to be sinless. And yet, again, Jesus Christ was handed over to troops. The SEAL team and the Marines of Herod had their time with Jesus. And they punched the daylights out of Jesus. And they took a thorn of crowns that they sewed together and rammed it upon his head. And the blood of God, Acts 20.28, has been spilled. It 
began before the Sanhedrin. It is being spilt upon the soldiers of Rome. When the deeds were done, Jesus took up his cross and carried it to a hill called Calvary. He even stumbled, but he carried that cross. The cross that they would nail him to. Thank you. And on that cross, he suffered and died. And when you die of crucifixion, it is suffering. You are literally drowning in your own body fluids while you're trying to breathe. And again, the holes in his hands, the holes in his feet. And God said upon that cross, It is finished. I don't have time to wait. Come on, let's go. And on that cross, God cried, It is finished. No other religion can proclaim it is finished because you have to do it every week. And on that cross, God, having finished all that needed to be finished for our souls, gave up the cross. Ghost. On that cross, he's died after suffering. God in the flesh. Where the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And the world was rejoiceful. Christ is dead. And they took a spear and pierced his side and blood and water came out. This is scripture. This is not the fairy tales your church will tell you tomorrow. Because Easter is not Christian. Easter is Estar, Roman paganism. That is the God that has the, all the boobies. She represents sex and fertility. You are worshiping Tammuz with Estar, Easter. If you're doing it in a professing Christian church, you are sinning. And let me tell you people, with children, when you send your children looking for those eggs, there's only one thing in this world I know that looks for eggs. That is sperm. And when you send your children looking for eggs, you are performing the mode of fertility, sex. But let's not leave Jesus dead, as we would a pope, or a pastor, or a priest, or a Hindu, or a Muslim. They die, and they're still dead. So Jesus died on that cross. And Joseph of Armia took the body, the body, and placed it in his tomb. And the government said, seal that tomb. We don't want his disciples coming and stealing the body. That'd be worse. And not only seal that tomb, they put a Roman guard and a Jewish guard in front of that tomb. So Jesus has died and is buried. Three days and three nights. Let's try it. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it don't fit. How do you get Friday to Sunday, three days and three nights? As he said, in the, as Jonas was in the belly of the whale, three days and three nights, the Son 
siblings came up. And the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ has been an eyewitness of more people you can find here at this farmer's market this afternoon. You can find the eyewitness of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ more than all the fans of Daytona 500 that would testify, I saw Christ die. We saw He was buried. And hallelujah, we saw Him arise. Well, you say, Pastor, Preacher, we, we are going to celebrate the resurrected Christ tomorrow. Really? Then why is He still nailed on the cross in your church? According to your idolatry, which the Bible says, thou shalt not have the idolatry, but we got to remove that from the Ten Commandments, make ten, two of them, because we like our dollies. If you have Christ nailed to the cross in your church, on, the, on your necklace, hanging from your rearview mirror, then you do not celebrate the resurrected Christ. You celebrate the Christ that is still on the cross. Put there by the Roman government. Because my Christ died on the cross once for all, but is no longer on that cross. And Acts chapter 1 says, and Hebrews says, that He is at the right hand of the Father right now. And Mary's not there. Salvation is wrought by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone, minus nobody else. For there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's pagan. That's that star. This star. This star. Check out that star. She's really good in pictures. Look, look up, look up on your internet. This star. I got you, man. I already did. Yep. That's nothing to do with Christianity. I'm sorry to put a black cloud on you, but that has nothing to do with Christianity. Yep. The, the girls had a like. What are you talking? About? The girls like really. So the story rests upon what happened 2,000 years ago last Tuesday. On last Tuesday, on the full moon, was the Jewish Passover. And about Jesus Christ to you who are Jews here, Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And when you take that Lamb that was celebrated on your Passover night, where God said, Take the blood with system and put it on the three posts of the door. I will pass through Egypt tonight. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And if I don't see the blood, I will suffer the death angel to go in and kill the firstborn. This is Jewish history. And that night, God says, get up and move. Leave Egypt. Left Egypt under the blood of the Lamb. I'm not good with dates, but I know the great event that happened next for the Jewish history. John the Baptist baptizing in the River Jordan professed to the Jewish people, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, of the people. The world, the people. 
Behold, that Lamb has come. Without spot, without blemish, sinless. God who is man and man who is God, all in one. He has come to go to Calvary. And Jesus Christ, the Gospel, He suffered and died on that cross according to the Scriptures. Jewish people, your Savior, your Messiah, the life of Jesus Christ, is according to your Scriptures. It is no more that you are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It has to be now you must be a child of God, a son of God, by Jesus Christ. It can't be your father Abraham no more. The finished work of salvation is the one that wrought that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. Boy, did the Jews know what he said at that moment. Except by me. You can't come to God as a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob today in the church age. You've got to come to Father God by Jesus Christ. And your rabbis and your synagogues preach anything else. You don't need a bar mitzvah anymore for your child. He has been born. He has lived. He has died. He was buried. And right now he's at the right hand of the Father. Right now. That is the story of the Gospel. Again, Easter and the Gospel has nothing to do with anything between the two. Honestly, I left the house today and said I'm not going to say nothing about Easter. I really did. But you cannot confess to be a Christian and celebrate Easter. Easter is pagan. You should have been here for April 1st. Jesus Christ, in His own words, again, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father, but unto... No man cometh unto the Father, but unto me. By me. I'm going to read to you... What really happened? It's in the Bible. I'm going to open up my Bible to Isaiah. And I'm going to read to you Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is just as good reading today as it was about 2,000 years ago. Because Isaiah 53 is about the Lord Jesus Christ on the moments that he went to that cross and was on the cross. And out of Isaiah 53, I'm giving you book and chapter. I'm going to read to you out of the King James Bible, Isaiah 53. What Jesus done for us. 
He is despised and rejected of men. Look. Look at the person next to you. That is someone right now that has despised and rejected Jesus Christ. Now go look in a mirror. You will find 53 verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. Like this man who called me a liar, he has rejected and despised Jesus Christ. You who say, I wish he shut up, wish he go away, I'm not going to listen to him. You have despised and rejected Jesus Christ. You are found in the Bible. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. You're not even listening. You're not even caring. Yet the Bible said you will. Do what you're doing. Oh, but you will love that Easter message tomorrow. You will fall for the poppycock of Satan. But you will not come to God, his son. Surely he has borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none good, no, not one. Jesus, because you are the sinner. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Ladies and gentlemen, Christ suffered for you. To be saved. Isaiah 53. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world was beaten, was whipped with a cattle nine, had his beard plucked, the thorns, the nails, because we are sinners. God took the abuse that we should be getting as saved Christians. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a sheep before her shares is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of living. He died on that cross. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit from his mouth. And yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. 
He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall be prosperous in his hand. Now what is Isaiah 53 about? It's about the last days of Christ who was bloody and painful and rejected. As he's rejected by you right now in 2017. Everything that finished the life of Jesus Christ was for you. Because your life will be finished if you were to die without Christ. I will tell you right now why you will go to hell. The one sin that will put you into hell is because you have rejected the finished work of Jesus Christ. Christ died for your sins. None of works, least any man should boast. There is nothing you can do that can save your soul. And your religion tells you that. Your religion even tells you you cannot know of a surety where you'll go when you die. And yet the Bible, the King James Bible says, These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Now, if you think you can pay for your own sins, and you can think you are better than Jesus Christ, there's a place for you called hell. And in hell, you will pay for your sins. But you do not have to pay for your sins, because your sins have been laid upon Jesus Christ. You do not have to burn in hell in the lake of fire. You can step up to God today and say, God, I am repenting of my sins. I am going to put everything on the finished work of your Son, Jesus Christ. You can be saved by the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. For the wages of sin is death. You will die because you are a sinner. Your death will prove you are a sinner. And Christ took the iniquity of us all. That final day, before the Sanhedrin, Your sins have been pay, paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. But you are not washed until you come to God in repentance by the Word of God and repent of your sins and put your faith and trust in what Jesus has done and not what you can do. If Jesus Christ is God, thank you, honey, for what you're doing. If Jesus Christ is God, and He is, then what makes you think that you can do something to outright God? What makes you think that your sinful priest can take care of your sins when Christ has already taken care of them? You can come to a priest that is a sinner, because you're a sinner, or you can come to God who's never done any sin. Now, the sinner take care of your sins, or the sinless taking care of your sins? Which one do you think God approves of? Religion is man-made, but Jesus Christ is God approved. The story of Jesus Christ and the Gospel is very serious. And how serious is it? Satan has tried to distract it with Easter and with bunnies and chocolate and lilies and Pop Sunday and Good Friday. 
Satan is trying to get rid of the gospel of Jesus Christ by pagan junk. And you fall for the pagan junk and Satan. Salvation is wrought by blood and blood alone. The blood of Jesus Christ. Where there's no blood shed, there is no remission found in Hebrews. Written to a bunch of people that their entire life under the Old Testament was the, the blood of bulls and goats. And the writer of Hebrews says, hey, Christ has offered one sacrifice for all. It's for you. As much as it is for me. Listen, in ten days, I'm celebrating a birthday. Ten days. And I'm not talking about the birthday where I was born of my mother. That's in September. But I got a birthday coming up in ten days. In ten days, I knelt down and I asked God through Jesus Christ to save my soul, to wash me of my sins. I became saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I became born again. Because when I was born of my mother, a nice woman, I said nothing against my mom but one thing. One thing my mom can honestly say to you, as a Christian, my mom was a sinner. And my grandma was a sinner. And my great-grandma were sinners. As with my dad. And my grandpa were sinners. And my great-grandpas were sinners. So, by birth, I'm going to die, because I'm a sinner. The wages of sin is death. I was born as you were born to die. And God saw that. God says that creation that I created, that I love, that were made to worship me, is going to die. But something's going to worse happen to my creation called man. Not only are they going to die, that's okay. But something else is going to happen to you when you die. Without Christ. Without God's help. Without God's help, you're going to die and go to hell. And God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God says, mankind, I don't want you to go to hell. And mankind will say, God, how do I not go to hell? For I so loved you, I gave my only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What is God's answer to you about going to hell? Jesus Christ. What is the love of God? Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, where will you go? Hell. You say, well, I'm a Baptist. There's no Baptist in heaven and there's no Baptist in hell. Absolutely none. I'm an atheist. There's no atheist in heaven. There's no atheist in hell. You either washed in the blood of Jesus Christ to go to heaven, or you go to hell. Without Christ, you go to hell. With Christ, you go to heaven. It's that simple. It's that plain. That is set by the standard of God. And God don't care if you don't like it. God never asks for your opinion. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved, and that name is Jesus. Are you 
washed in the blood? That's the question. What about if you were to die today? What if, what if by accident the American government dropped Moab on you right now? Where would you be in eternity? What if a, mu a Muslim wanted to get his virgins and decide killing everyone right now? Where would you be in eternity? What if your heart is not so good and your heart decides, that's it, I quit? Where are you going to be in eternity? What if one of these border drivers kill you? Where are you going to be in eternity? Everybody dies. Everybody. All have sinned and come short of glory of God. Yep. Okay. That's it. No, because after that, there comes judgment. Judgment comes after death. You right, because I die now. Yep. Death is coming. Death is coming. It may be today. You may not have tomorrow. And if you die without Jesus Christ, you will wake up in hell. If you die in Christ, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Now, this can't be hell. There's air conditioning, there's a breeze, there's fruits, there's water. In hell, there is none of that. Don't be fooled that this is hell. Because some people enjoy their lives. There's no enjoyment in hell. And by the way, this can't be hell because I'm here. I have the nerve to say that this is not hell because I am here, because I'm a born-again Christian, and I can't go to hell. If this was hell, the rapture would have already happened. And your devil would come up and raise this, this world. That would be hell. But that's just a tip of hell. In hell, there's no air conditioning. There's no water. There's no beer. In heaven, you don't need any of that stuff either. you got God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You get a new body. You get no more pain, no more sorrow. Isn't that good enough? If God is offering to you a perfect, sinless, without sorrow, and no painful body, would that be enough just to come out? Hey, no, preacher. I want to buy that snake oil that's on television at 3 o'clock in the morning. And waste your money when Christ is offering you a free gift. Eternal hope. Eternal life. No pain, no sorrow. No weight gain. For all eternity. All peace and all joy. For all eternity. Is wrought by Jesus Christ. No better body can you get than the body that Jesus Christ will get you in glory. The story of Jesus Christ is, He suffered and died that you may get life. He that has the Son has eternal life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Hell. We stand here to preach, don't go to hell. That has been the foundation of our preaching. I don't even know how long we began this. Man will tell you to go to hell. We stand here to tell you not to go to hell. And we will tell you how not to go. Jesus Christ. You are the sinner that Christ died for. You. You say, who, who, who? You! If you hear me, you are the sinner that Christ died for. 
if you don't hear me. You are the sinner that Christ died for. He that has ears, let him hear. Jesus said. There are plenty of people in the Bible that heard Jesus, but they didn't hear him. There are plenty of people that are hearing the gospel right now, but they ain't listening. And one day you will die. I hope before your death you believe on Jesus Christ. I hope. But if you don't, when you die without Christ, you will become a Bible believer. Your atheism will change to, I believe in God. But by then it will be too late. Once you die, that's it. You can't come back. You can't redo over. It's not Life is not a video game. I don't know, this is probably old arcade, but you can't... Don't go look out for Pokemon, go look out for Jesus. He's right here. And with Jesus, you get eternal life. With Jesus, you change your eternal being from hell to heaven by Jesus Christ. Don't be fooled by religion. In the nutshell of religion, religion will tell you also, we can't tell you what's going to happen. Religion cannot promise you like what God can promise you. And how do you know if you were to die in religion and somebody would love you enough to do what needs to be done while you're dead, while they're alive? Have they been lying to you? They don't even say, oh, we love you, but you don't, they don't really love you, and you die, you go off, or whatever they tell you where you go off, and they say, well, the hell with them. You're in trouble. Because that priest ain't going to pray for you unless you give them cash, check, or money order. But if you're to die in Christ, it's not cash, it's not check, it's not money order. It's the precious love, blood of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. This message by God is so important that He says in Mark 16, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. That Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again according to the scriptures. And according to the scriptures you will die. And God says, I will give you a free choice, a free will. God will let you choose. Do you want heaven or do you want hell? Now, the condition of that choice you get to make is, yeah, yeah, I want to go to heaven. The condition is by Jesus Christ. Well, no, 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 I don't want Jesus. Well, then you don't go to heaven. It's not what you think. It's not your opinion. Opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got a set of them and they stink. But Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's Jesus speaking. Jesus, who is God, said, you can't get to heaven except by me. And you're going to walk off and say, this will do it. That will do it. What I think will do it. And God, Jesus Christ, already said, nope, not going to work. Salvation is not wrought by thinking. It is wrought by repenting and coming to Jesus Christ as your Savior. Salvation is not brought by going to church. Which church? You know how many churches there are in this world? Which one? 
Salvation is not by baptism. Salt or fresh water. City water or lake water. River bed or ocean. Which water? Sprinkle, immerse, water gun, fire hydrant, how? Well, I'm a good person. How good do you have to be good to get to heaven? When the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. Jesus said, heaven and, earth will, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. What I'm preaching to you out of the Bible will outstand heaven and earth. And what I'm preaching to you out of the Bible will stand at either judgment you will go to. For to save the judgment seat of Christ, you'll be judged on the word of God. For the loss at the great white throne judgment, you will be judged based upon the word of God. And you can't profess ignorance. Because you have heard what God has said. You are without excuse today. Though Satan is trying to distract you with your money, with the green beans, with the tomatoes, oh, I haven't seen you in a long time, how you doing? Though Satan is trying to distract you from the gospel. The gospel is being, being presented to you right now, and you cannot tell God, I never knew. Because now you know. Oh, I don't know. Okay, let me tell you. Jesus saves, and Jesus saves alone. Now you know. It's that simple. It's that simple. And when you stand before God to the great white throne judgment, you're going to wait. Oh, I wish I listened to him. I wish I punched that vendor right in the mouth when he told don't listen to him. One more thing about hell. You never get out. Make a fire, hell. You never come out. The Bible proclaims in Revelation 19, 18, 19, that time stops. In the eternity, there's no tomorrow, there's no today, there's no 5 o'clock, there's no 3 o'clock, there's no Monday, there's no Wednesday, there's no weekend, there's no April, there's no July, there's no December. There is no time in eternity. And when you go to heaven by Jesus Christ, or you go to hell by everything else, that will be for all without end. You can't and I cannot fathom life without time. Some of you right now, oh, pretty soon you'll be done. In hell you'll be saying, <laughs> I'm just here. I'm always going to be here. And if I only listen to the Bible... Forget the preaching part. Listen to the Bible. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 Imagine going to hell and having that repeat in your mind for eternity. Oh, if I only believed on Jesus, if I only believed on Jesus... I was such a fool. In hell, you remember. That rich man that went in hell in the Gospel of Luke, he knew he had five brethren. He knew what water was. And he has a tongue. And he has eyes. And he has a mouth that speaks. He just didn't have beer. He didn't have a party. Surely 
goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Life is hell without Jesus Christ. That's where you're going. Condemnation is damnation by you rejecting Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no other method. There is nothing else that will get you out of hell. You don't realize that the love of God is what we are telling you right now. We are offering you a free gift. And that free gift comes from God. You want something free? You want a gift that lasts forever? God's gift. His Son, Jesus Christ. Forever. Eternal life is wrought by Jesus Christ. Eternal damnation is by anything but Jesus Christ. And the decision you have right now is a, it can be, a yes or no. Eternal life right now is either yes or no. Yes, I want Jesus Christ, or no, I don't want Jesus. But be forewarned. In Corinthians chapter 11, Paul tells us that there's another Jesus, and that other Jesus will not save you. Be forewarned. Satan has his own Jesus. And he comes in many names, titles, and doodads, and... But the biblical Jesus came in the will of the Father. Came that you might have life, and have life more abundantly. Came and suffered and died for you. Jesus didn't come to shed your blood, he shed his blood. And Jesus said, if you come unto me, I'll no wise cast you out. So what must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. Stealing, lying, cheating, adultery, fornication, that's what caused Jesus to go to the cross. Listen, if you're cheating that customer right now, Christ went to the cross for that. Putting bad strawberries on the bottom. Christ went to the cross for that. That sin that you don't think nobody knows about, God does. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. That sin, Christ died and can re release you from that sin and the penalty of that sin, death and hell. Now you'll die, but you won't go to hell. If you're to confess your sins and put your faith and belief on Jesus Christ, the Son of God, which take away the sin of the world. Rest assured, Jesus is mine. What a foretaste of glory divine. There is nothing I could have done for salvation at all. Nothing.
There's nothing you can do. It's been all finished by Jesus Christ. It's all been done by Jesus Christ. That's what we preach. It's the name we preach. The love of God is Jesus Christ. It's so important that we have taken our time on Saturday morning to come and tell you about Jesus. I could have stayed in bed. I could have been doing other things. But we want to tell you about Jesus. Another day of the week we go out at night and tell people about Jesus. We're not selling you anything. It's free. It's not snake oil. That's Satan. We are giving you hope. Blessed hope. The glorious hope of Jesus Christ, the Lord God. And we have studied our Bible. We have read our Bible. We know the Bible to what God wants us to know today. We know enough to know that you are rejecting. And we know that you're going to reject. We know many will go the Broadway. But we also know few will come. We pray for that one person to come out today. But we also believe, we also know that you may not come out today. You may take one of these tracks. You may take this message. You may have the opportunity to do it tomorrow. You say, oh, look at that guy preaching. Look at that. He ain't got no crowd over there. Neither did Jesus. When he died on that cross, of the disciples that were with him, twelve disciples, one was right by his side. That's it. Christianity is not, the true biblical Christianity from Antioch is not the masses of the people. It's the few. And even with that, the discipleship is even fewer of the few. Well, I know a Christian, he don't do what you do. Yeah, because he doesn't want to live fully to God. Hey, Jeremiah. Hey. God bless you guys. Thanks for being here. Have a good day now. Get some fish. But the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. You're not going to be visited by an angel. God is not going to come down in your bedroom and have a powwow with you. The gospel has been entrusted to those who have believed the gospel. God is everywhere. And without Jesus Christ, He's not in your heart. God can be anywhere, but if, he's, if you have not trusted Jesus Christ, He is not in your heart. For with the heart, man believes unto salvation. Thank you, Lord. Aren't those fruits and vegetables delicious? Aren't they just great? Have you thanked God for them? He said, God, I just thank you for this juicy orange. The Bible says rejoice evermore. And everything give thanks. I'll do that in November. And when November comes, Lord willing, I'll hit that holiday too. You want to sign me on for preaching? I'm great for holidays. I 
got card up here. I got my phone number and address. You want me to come? I'll give you one of my cards. I'm great for holidays. I'm great for the truth. Jesus. I'll bring my own Bible to the courtroom they want me to swear. Remember on this weekend, on tax day, and tomorrow, the pagan holiday, that Jesus saves. Now he won't save you from paying your taxes. He won't save you from a bellyache from all that chocolate. But he will save you from going to hell. He will save your children from all the lies you have to tell them for not believing Jesus. To fairy, Easter Bunny, Santa Claus. You believe on Lord Jesus Christ to get saved, get in the Bible, get in the true worship. You don't need all that other crap. All you need is Jesus in the Bible. Jesus, the wonderful name I've ever known. The one that will take me home. Glory, glory to the Lamb. To the one great I Am, Jesus Christ. That made the heaven and the earth. From Mary's womb, he gave birth. He suffered and died and bled for me. All upon Calvary.